All right, welcome to the last part of the tutorial. We are now officially going to bring this in all into UDK and set it up, and everything should work out. So first things first, I'm going to export selected. Okay, I'm going to put this in my weapons, my M60, and I'm just going to make a new folder here called static. I want to make it an ASE. I'm just going to call this m60static.ase, hit save. You can check my settings here. Okay, I don't need any of this stuff. I do need all this. I don't just need these. I don't even really need that. Okay, just hit okie doke. Come over to UDK. I'm just going to select one of these guys here. Import. Okay, go to my weapons here. Grab this static. Make this a new package called what underscore m60. And it's going to be called mesh. m60 static is fine. This is just for me to set stuff up. Probably not going to have a static model. And if I double click this bad boy, you can see there she blows. And if you look at the materials, I have one. If I highlight that, the whole thing gets highlighted here. Okay. Next, I'm going to save this really fast. In my projects folder. I'm just going to call it what it's called. Okay, and come here. You can see I got my mesh group here. Now what I want to do is import my textures. Okay, and why is that folder empty? Let's see here. It is empty. going to move these textures out to there. Just had them in the wrong spot, no biggie. Weapons, M60, textures, and I'm going to get all the diffuse textures first. Okay, that way I don't have to change settings, hit OK, change settings, hit OK. I can just change my settings and hit OK to all. And the grouping here is going to be textures, it's still my web M60. I don't need to change anything when I'm doing a diffuse texture. Just going to hit OK to all. It is going to take roughly a second. So I'm going to pause the video while it's going. Alright, there they are. I'm just going to import the normal maps. Okay, two, three, four. Hit OK. Settings I want here are compression no alpha. Compression settings, I want them in TC normal map. That's all I need. Just hit OK to all. It will take once again another second, so I will pause again. Alright, and they're all in. Okay. So I got my mesh, I got my textures. With everything imported, I'm going to save the package again. Just in case there's a crash, I don't want to have to do that again. It's always a good idea to kind of save in stages. Um, UDK, it does have a little bit of a propensity for uh, crashing and crashes are never a good thing. It's usually user uh, error, but not always. Still in beta. And this is going to compress all of the textures, um, which is a good thing to do right in the very beginning. So it does take a minute. So once again, I'm going to pause the video while it does this save. Alright, I just want to check are all my textures here? If I look in my textures, I've got four diffuse textures and I got four normal maps. That's good. Okay, it even came out in a weird pattern. I like it. Looks pretty. Okay, now I need to make a material. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab 
let's say this receiver, I'm going to right click I'm going to say copy full name to clipboard Okay, and I'm going to take my main diffuse, right click, say create new material put this in materials and this is M60 underscore mat that's it okay all right I'm gonna double click this and I'll have to shrink it probably yep that's okay just get this into view all right let me shrink a couple of these guys here now what I can do is I can hold control to move this around no big deal I'm gonna hit control W to make a duplicate of it duplicate and then here under the texture, because I copied that full name of the other one to the clipboard, I can just paste. And then what I can do, so if I hit Control Shift and F, drops that's the uh, hotkey for opening the content browser or just bringing it to the front. It's quite handy. Now I'm going to take this guy and say copy full name to clipboard, and I'm going to select this one. Come here, I'm going to hold T and click. and hopefully that didn't do it twice. It did do it twice, but that's okay. Drag that down, and then I can paste the name I put in the clipboard. Yeah. Okay. Zoom out a little bit. Just going to move these over here. Now let's get our normals. Copy full name to clipboard. And I'm going to select one more. I'm going to take two of these. Control and Alt will allow you to drag a marquee selection. So Control W. Just taking a second. Okay. On the first one I'm gonna hit the green arrow to plug in what I have selected and on the second one I'm gonna paste. Okay, so I can bring in two at a time. Copy this one's name and select this one. Take these two, control W, drag them down, plug in what I have selected, and then paste what I have in my clipboard for the name. So now I should have bullet, ammo, mean, receiver. Now let's shrink this just a little bit for now and do a, a hair bit of management. What I want to do is this is my main. I want to actually put these in the order that they are being used in the materials. From bottom to top, uh, what I'm thinking is actually like the way Photoshop does its layers. Layer 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, they go from the bottom to the top. Not that this makes any difference whatsoever. So, mains on the bottom, receivers number 2, ammo is number 3, and bullet is number four and I'm not gonna worry about that for now alright the next thing I want to do is I want to see this on the model so I can ensure that everything is working so if I come hit control shift F and I go to the mesh and just highlight the mesh come over here and hit this big old huge green arrow and what that does is that sticks my gun in the view which is really hard to see because it's black however if I just simply tie in a diffuse texture to it you can see that it is here on the gun, okay. If I show this, it's all working out, okay. Now, what we need to do here is go in and just start our magic. Now, if linear interpolate is what I want, however, there's a nice handy hotkey, just hold L and click and there she blows, okay? You can get your lerp. Alright, now I'm going to go back to my content browser here and I am going to type in mask and I'm going to hit all assets and I'm just going to highlight textures and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to call and I'm gonna, what I'm looking for here is mask puny, okay? If I double click this guy you can see here, let me shrink 
Okay. There is something that's very important um, when you do. I, I showed you in the last video how to create this texture. This is exactly the same thing. Okay, my red channel it doesn't show up white. It actually shows up the color. Okay, no difference whatsoever. And there's my alpha channel, which this is how each of the channels looks in Photoshop. This is that texture that I created. Okay. You'll notice that they're perfectly sharp here. However, when you import these, that is not going to be the case. What you are going to see is something like this, which is pretty much, in all regards, useless. Okay, the quadrants are screwed. It's fuzzy, and everything's crap. The trick is your filter here. Okay, this needs to be nearest, and what that does this is like choosing um, your resampling in Photoshop if you know anything about the uh, inner workings of how Photoshop works and you scale something up it asks you do you want to do it by cubic um, you know or, or nearest or whatnot nearest basically takes a sample when it's re resizing stuff when it's actually like doing like a compression here hang on so basically when it samples this stuff it's hard to explain and I don't really need to go too much in depth just know that you want to set nearest here but what's really going on is is um, linear is, is basically kind of like a bicubic and what it does is it takes uh, like, a, like a four pixel sample of all the pixels around it okay you know one two three four and then averages that color for that pixel because remember when you resize stuff it needs to generate new pixels so what color should they be it takes a sample of each pixel and the colors around it that's that's why image quality degrades as you size stuff up okay because it just doesn't know what to do with these pixels and it can't know it's impossible it's a stupid computer okay so that's what we're seeing when we first bring this in is it's all like you can tell that it's it's shifted it over it's almost like it's sampling all of the colors together okay each channel together so when you do nearest it just says okay take each pixel and just take whatever's the value like one pixel over and use that which happens to be black okay so if you want this sharp this has to be nearest okay this is the hugest most important thing here if you don't use nearest you can't do this okay especially on something this tiny now if you use like a hundred and twenty eight uh, pixel image then yeah you, okay you can use it but if you're just using a two by two okay which you can see here two by two and you can see in the little preview window here it's awful okay but here's here's a mask that's actually uh, what is this Let me see. This is the same thing, but uh, this one, this is actually, um, this one's actually 64 pixels. Why is that like in the middle of the white? Okay, 64 pixels. And you can see if I do linear here, it just kind of makes it a little blurry. Okay? It's almost like a compression in a way, but it's not really compression, it's a filter. Okay? But I chose nearest on this too but this was an earlier one that I had done before I realized and, and actually ran an experiment to see okay maybe I can get away with one pixel because it's just a square and what's what shape is a pixel it's a square okay so when you do a two by two like this you need that okay so I'm just gonna I need this so I'm gonna hold T and click and here I have that texture so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna linear interpolate now the way linear interpolate works is it's actually B over A, okay? So it's saying what texture do you want on top? And B is the one that comes up on top. So I'm gonna do this texture over this texture and I'm gonna use the red channel here. Now <coughs> excuse me if I just do it like this, this texture is not going to do me any good whatsoever. And just as a little bit of an exploratory experiment, I'm going to go ahead and tap this into the diffuse now. And you can see that this I'm going between this receiver part and this other one and it's not working, okay? 
this is not getting the right layout. You can see it pretty clear there that, that this is not lining up. What I need to do is I need to right click off of here and add new expression coordinate texture coordinate. Okay, I'm not going to mess with the tiling. What I'm going to mess with is the coordinate index which is my UV tile which is 1 because I want that to be number 2. Okay, now the other thing is, is, is this first one lies on the first quadrant here. The second one is actually in the green over here. Okay, remember my quadrants one, two, three, and four. So actually, I need this alpha to go to the green channel, and you can see that voila, that works out. Now it's a little hard to tell in this preview image here. If I were to take this to the ammo bag, you can see how it cuts that into the little corner but it lays over the top of the whole thing because the texture is laying out on UV channel 1 which is across the whole thing but it's being masked by UV channel 2 here using this green channel which has all of these faces on UV channel 2 are tucked into the corner so all of these faces are only going to receive the texture because they're in the white here on this UV channel 2. Okay? That's why this works. So, I'm going to hold L again, and now here is where this actually starts pretty much chaining out. Well, let me move this out a little bit. It, it does get a little messy, but it's, it's okay. So, what I need to do now is I need to linear interpolate this ammo bag over the top of this whole linear interpolate, this whole shebang here, okay, uh, which is, oops, A to that guy. So really this, this should be here, and this kind of should, should come out this way. And the ammo bag uses coordinate 3, okay, quadrant 3, so I put that there. And now if I tie this next step in my chain to the diffuse, come on, always happens. Kerplow, Kadoosh, okay, look at the ammo bag, it's perfect on there. One more linear interpolate. I want my bullets over this whole thing using the last channel, which is my alpha. Okay, and you can see here that now I've got these four in this little preview there's four things I hit that to the diffuse and there's the bullets so one material four completely separate large size textures one draw call ultimate amount of detail okay this works out really well and this that's it that's all you've got to do However, you do want to do your channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate all of this. I'm going to hold Control and Alt, drag a box, hit Control W, without clicking anything because it would be a real pain in the bum to try to move that. Just hold Control, drag this down. And what I'm going to do is each one of these is just going to go to the speculars instead. You can see it here. Okay. Now my specular is working. So if I move my light around, oops, hold the wrong key here. You can see on the ammo bag it's working. All right working well. You can see that it's working on my metal here. Okay, let me uh, disconnect the diffuse. 
You can see my specular is working. Okay. All right, so last but not least, we need to do our normal map. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of give myself a wide berth. Now there's two ways I can do this. One, I can copy this and insert my normal map names. But I would want to copy this one because it's tied into the spec. I can copy this one and insert my normal maps. Easy. Easy as pie. Okay, just click this, plug in the normal map name. In fact, I can pretty much just rename it NM. That's a quick and very easy way to do it, and that is the way I suggest that you do it. But, just for the sake of this being a tutorial, I'm going to set it up again one more time so you can see it. Okay? I'm going to copy these guys. Okay? I'm going to come over here, and what I'm going to do, is, this is how I do it now, is L, click, hold L, click, hold L, click, and just lurpy, 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 right across this whole thing. Okay. B over A, using the green channel. Okay, B over A using the blue channel, B over A using the alpha channel. Okay, and then if I tie this into the normal map, come on. Ta-da! All my normals are there. All my scratches, my dents, my machine marks. Okay. Just check my bullets. Just move my light around. Okay. You see my bullets are good. Everything's good. Okay, you can see my rubber there, which looks a little bit more like plastic. Cloth normals are working good. Just check my my stitching. Stitching's picking up. cloth itself is picking up. Okay, so everything's working. And now what it is, is just a matter of me going in and basically, do I want to make any edits to my textures now? And this is where basically you just have to inspect your model and s decide what's too bright, what's too dark, what's not deep deep enough in the normals, what where your specular might be too too obvious and things like that. And the last thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to go through that whole thing, okay? Because that really is just a matter of tweaking. Is uh, actually first I'm going to make a new comment here and I'm going to call this normal okay I'm going to make a comment here just right click in the gray say new comment which is off the screen but if I right click up here it's here right here new comment call this specular and I'm going to control alt grab all that right click new comment diffuse okay and then I can pretty much so organize this however I want. And what I want to do is I want to work on my specular power. I could just tie this straight to my specular power. 
but that is n really not enough. Okay? It's just not enough. It's way too low. Okay? Because it's pretty much under one. Alright? There's multiple things I can do as well. I can hit M. Okay? Which is a multiply. And if I multiply my specular to my diffuse channel and use that in specular I can really bring the amount of the specular down quite heavily okay but that actually tends to lose a little bit of the normal map information it's really not enough so I'd need to probably multiply this by a higher value because these are gonna darken it however the cloth actually looks pretty good doing that so what if I want to just fix my cloth specular and keep my metal specular the same well once again I can hit L and lerp. What I can do is I can lerp this B over A using the blue channel because that's what my green one is. Okay, which is my uh, when I say green, I mean my ammo box. And you can see. That, that basically just puts that on top. So using that mask, all my metal is going to be back to normal, but my ammo bag is good. Okay? My specular power is still way too low. It needs to be in the, the realm of like 90 or so. And just, just as a note, I did not end up putting a plastic grip around this and the reason was is because when I did finally just say I mean, I'm gonna go take a peek at some pictures of some M60s I wanna see uh, what's 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 the scenario here do do any of them do that no they don't they none of them really have a grip guard too much um, I think I found one or two but I wanna go a little bit more standard so they just kind of corrugate this by cutting in dips and whatnot so this is a further level that I could do. Okay, you can see that I combined the specular with the diffuse, and then I lerp that to make the specular for my ammo bag, which works out really well. So now what I want to do is actually get, and if I want to, you can say ammo lerp. Okay, just to show that that's what that's doing. Okay, organization is 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 a good thing to do. We do have quite a bit of spider webbing going on here. Now I want to try to work on my specular power, and I'm going to try a couple of things. Obviously, the very first thing you can do is just hit one and get a number, and I'm going to go about 60. Okay, which is a lot more than one. But that will tighten up the highlights over everything a lot more. Okay, you can see my edging picks up more. Okay, it's very glossy now. And that's working good on the bullets. Okay, those are those are very shiny, and that's that's pretty much what I want. I may want to lerp the bullets together. So if I take this and I hit control W and move that, you can see it took the stuff that was underneath it, which is really quite assy, but oh well. And I'm gonna I don't know if I can oh yeah, if I just click on it I can call this bullet lerp 
and basically I want this up here and this down here because I'm doing the same thing okay and then I'm LARPing this over this but I'm using my alpha channel now because I want it to be where my bullets are lying yeah yeah when you when you're zoomed out like this it's kind of frustrating okay and then actually no I don't want B to go or A to go to this. I want actually A to go to this guy so that it picks up my lurping of what I also did on the ammo. And then I tie that to specular and you should see that those dull out a little bit but they're the color of the bullet now. Okay, but they are also multiplied by the actual specular channel. Okay, I could take this further. I could increase this. I could say I want to multiply this whole specular by I don't know ten before I multiply this in. And in that case, I would want to pretty much start spacing out a little bit more here. And I don't mean spacing out like sitting here with my my thumb up my bum staring at the screen. I mean giving myself some space. Okay. Now again, like I said, it's it like okay, try to connect something at this distance. It's it's not going to work. However, if you want to connect this, you can always click it zoomed in and if you just move over, it does trail out, you know, it does as I hit the corners, it does scroll my screen out, which is which is pretty handy. And normally I'm working 1920 by 1080, so I can see a lot here. And it, you know, you can get these things out of the way a little bit more. Your material expressions, you can just get rid of. It gives you more space, you know. Manage your space here, because these this can get crazy. But if you look at some of um, Epic's materials. There's some where you're zoomed out all the way and it's just this whole area. You know, it's just an insane amount of materials going on. Which is kind of, you know, it's interesting, but. So let me try really quick. I'm just going to move this over here out of the way. I'm going to try to work on my specular power. I'm getting pretty close to being happy with it. All of these edits I really can't do to just the texture. Okay? Because I'm using an alpha channel for the specular and not just a separate specular texture to try to save some space, I do need to do a simple multiply and lerp between the specular and that. So if I want to pick up the color of the underlying object, I need to do it like this. Okay? And I, I really I really like the way that the ammo bag is looking. Okay. It's got some specular in there. It's very, very subtle, and it is the color of the ammo bag. However, I don't want to just use the ammo bag by itself, okay? Because that defeats the poipus. Alright, so what I'm gonna do. is try to just simply increase the strength of this whole specular channel for use in my specular power. Which just brings it out a little bit more. Okay. I usually have a much larger preview window going on.
which helps. Okay, again, manage your manage your space. And now the bullet lerp. I want to add another layer. I want to just multiply this whole thing. For now, I'm going to go extreme 10, and I'm going to tie that there. You can see that that just brought out the bullet highlight, okay, because it's still being lerped here. You can see that that got a lot brighter in my specular. Okay, and I do actually like that. So, for the most part, I can call this done. Now, looking at this, I actually do think that, yeah, I don't think these are deep enough here, these grooves. I think they could be much deeper than that. So in the end, I'm going to fix that, but I'm going to spare you guys that. It's not going to be anything even remotely informative over anything that I've said before. It's really not. Um, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to increase the amount of the opacity of this layer that has these grooves. Okay, And then I'm going to recreate a new normal map and I'm going to re-import it and it's going to overwrite everything. It's going to plop right in here. So now the cool thing is, is any changes I want to make to any of the images are going to go right into this whole material expression. There's a couple things I want to ex express here. I have a texture sample here and a texture sample here that are identical. This actually just counts as one texture sample. I can copy and duplicate this out as many times as I want. I could have taken this and dragged it all the way or drug it all the way up here to this one's alpha channel, but then I now have this crisscross mess. So for organizational purposes, UDK will treat any duplicate texture as just one sample usage. Okay? You can see here that I've got 70 instructions on my shader and my light environment shader and I've got 34 instructions on my vertex shader and I'm using 9 of 15 texture samples. I don't even know what what that means. And really I have 8, 9, okay? You can see that here. It's 9. I don't know where the 15 is coming from. Maybe there's a maximum of 15 that you're allowed to use in any one material. That could be potentially um, a limitation on what you can do here. I'm not really sure why it's slash 15. Um, but you can see that I've got 4 diffuse, 4 normals, and I've got the 1 mask. So, using 9 textures, I am effectively one material. So if I just go ahead and compile that, and you can see it compiled almost instantaneously. Now all I gotta do is come here to my mesh, just clear this because I was sorting by mask, control shift F, go to my materials. You can see the material looks like this, okay? I can now just slap that in. You can see that because I had this selected, it's all purple. You just gotta click something up here. Okay, and then it goes good. And now this gun, this this preview window is not as fun to use as the one in the material editor because you can't middle mouse move it around for some weird reason. All you can really do is zoom in and out. You can use your keys to actually navigate, but Look, I just barely tap W here, and whoosh, you know, it's, it's like, how do you, you know, I wish I could slow that down. Maybe there is a setting. I don't know. But, but moving the camera around here sucks. But you can see from a distance, it looks pretty good. All my dirt's there. The dirt might actually be a little too, too, too obvious for my tastes. I may want to actually make it a multiply layer 
in Photoshop and bring it back so it's not so apparent. I may want to just tone back the the other stuff. I may want to add the dirt to the normal map. You know, just copy that over to the bump map. I may want to add it to the specular level so that it it takes out some of the specular because dirt isn't necessarily shiny. Okay, and you can see that my shine's going right over the dirt. So there's plenty of things that I didn't take into account that I could take into account. And the beauty now is that I'm looking at it pretty much in a general version of the dynamic lighting environment that I'm going to get in my game. Okay, So I can manage my textures now. I don't have to do anything else to the material. It's, it's dialed. Okay, It's set up. And really it's just, just managing some of those images that I want to do and I'm probably I'm probably you know before I'm done I'm gonna go through and do it but like I said I'm not gonna show it um, and because this is it's very specific to this 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 weapon right so what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be painting something else so you need to inspect your object and you need to see where your your details are lying and how they're blending and how it's looking and and you need to alter that on your version of whatever you've created okay this is not a tutorial where I'm actually making anything, any files available. Okay, this is more, this is an information tutorial for sure. But let me just show you an example or two. I'm going to save this really quick, and I believe it might go quickly, but it might not. If it says it's compiling that material, I'm going to pause. Yeah, see, it was pretty quick. Okay. or not. Okay, I'm going to pause. <laughs> okay, so pretty much right when I hit pause, it finished. Okay. Alright, now, let me just show you a couple more examples of, of where I've done this same thing. I got here this this ratsy rat. You can see that the textures got some detail in there. Okay. He's got his evil. You can see that the quality of the texture is actually, it's not great, but it's pretty good. And it's using 2048s. And if I show you over here, the um, materials, there's one material. Okay, so if I find that material, you can see I didn't organize it as well, but this is a much more basic version of the material. All right? But I'm doing the same thing. Okay. However, I only needed to use three textures for this. The fourth texture is his helmet, which is a separate object, we decided later. But you can see he's got decent normal maps, he's got evil red eyes, okay? He's got all of his wrinkles and the wrinkles also have cloth that it's the same cloth actually it's that's that burlap it's just a little bit larger eh, okay well, I missed that there but no big whoop okay nobody's gonna really notice that he's got a tail okay and it's all in these textures here um, I think another one that I did this on is is a Jeep all assets here same thing here with this Jeep okay if you look at my material now in this case the material for my Jeep this was an earlier model that I did has two materials I've got my multi mat which is all of these four textures you can see there's quite a bit of resolution in there and I also have the glass which was separate okay because this required like opacity as well which I, you can do that here in, in this material thing, but this was before before I realized that I could do that 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 eight mask thing and actually get higher because I have four already using four materials here I didn't know yet how how I would be able to fit another uh, material in there okay this one also has a separate channel here for for the headlights and the and the tail lights, and I want to thank Michael for setting that up. Same guy who modeled the M60. I freaking love that dude. 
alright, and I love my my other friend, my programmer, that sets all this stuff up, those guys are fantastic, and I don't love them like, like what, what in the butt, or anything, I love them as friends and as colleagues, alright, these guys, these guys know what they're doing, and that's always good to work with people that know what they're doing, um, so, and I think, I haven't used it on too many other areas. I'd have to kind of just go back and try to remember. But like I said, I've been using this for a while now, and it's tried and tested. And this is a static mesh, and so was the Ratsy. Okay, he's a Nazi rat. He's using um, he's a, he's a skeletal mesh, so, and 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 it works perfectly fine on him. Okay, he's a skeletal mesh. He animates, and everything is here somewhere. Actually, if I just uh, come over here and show you that the animations do work. Okay. It previews the wrong mesh, but it's quite an easy fix. I can just say use the Ratsy. I'll just scrub one or two animations here. Okay. Using a multi multiple materials. Okay, he's got one material on him. Four full blown textures, his body, his hands and his head. Okay, and then there's the separate um helmet and I'll show you if I bring down this uh socket manager, there's a helmet socket and it's using the helmet pickup mesh, okay, which when you shoot him in the head, his helmet flies off, and that can be picked up and put back on, okay. If you lose your helmet, you can run over there and 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 put it back on if you don't get killed before before that happens. And here's the separate helmet, okay. It's on its side, but it needed to be so that it would align properly. And you can see I used pretty much the same exact technique to paint this as I did the M60. Okay. It's got dents and cracks and scratches and bumps. I didn't do anything different whatsoever. Except I did kind of darken the inside right here. Alright. You can see all the scratches and stuff. It's 2048, I think. Or 1024 or whatnot. But it's Im it was an important element. Okay, this, this shape here this German helmet is was very very important to us that, that it be be good detail because it practically defines his little butt okay so there you have it um, that is how to paint particular types of details and how to set up your max file for using more than one texture on one material and it's how to set up the material in UDK. And I hope that this has been something that you've enjoyed and are able to put into practice for yourself and that you do get something like this. I'm quite quite pleased. I think it looks okay. Um, could be a little happier with with it. Okay, there's, so, there's some edits I can do, but again, it's all texture edits. So once you get to this point, you know, now it's just a matter of tuning, doing what you think feels right, what it needs or whatnot. Um, I do also need to get this into the game and see how it's going to look in, in some of our actual maps held in your hand and whatnot. I have to animate this in three player and one player, okay? We've got to do the upper body blend for him holding this thing. I have to do the reload, which is a little extensive, but it's not going to be too horrible. Make sure that these are flapped over and then when he brings up the ammo bag he slaps it back over kind of thing okay so there's more work to do on this weapon before it's game ready this is really the first step but it's quite an enjoyable step for me I personally find this to be the essence of the art creation you know doing this and again as you can see I did this pretty much uh, you know 98 percent by hand um, didn't didn't really 
use any reference or photos or anything, you know, and it doesn't look too bad. It could be darker, too, like I said. I could make it a little bit more black. Um, and really, I could probably fake that in the material just by multiplying it by, like, 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.6 or whatever. And that'll darken everything, which will also darken the, the dirt for me, you know. So I could mess with the material more if I wanted to. I could just darken the texture if I wanted to, which is a little bit more optimized. And and now it's really up to me where to go from here. And more importantly, it's up to you where you take this from here. Um, what I do to my gun is, is completely irrelevant. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And I'm going to go ahead and point this right at your face and bid you a fond farewell. And thank you for watching. And I... Uh, We'll see you in our next tutorial, whenever that may be.